Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Steve here with Steve's Hardware. Today we're going to be taking a look at basically the results from an article we published a couple weeks ago, but this is going to be the video version. You can find links to that article and all the mentioned articles in this video uh, in the comments section. So let's get started. Windows 11 uh, came out about a year ago in October 2021. Right now it's August 2022, or September 2022. Sorry, I always have to get used to the months. Um, and we have latest updates uh, for Windows 11, including an optional update, which will be pushed in September Tuesday updates. And uh, we have Windows 10 updated as well. Windows 11 is new, and relatively, compared to Windows 10 and the other operating systems that came before it. Uh, so it has a little bit of quirks, and we want to see how far Windows 11 has come compared to Windows 10. Uh, we're going to basically compare Alder Lake, Zen 3, so 5000 series AMD CPUs and Intel's 12th generation core processors and we're going to see how they do in Windows 10 versus 11 and also versus each other. So let's get started. For the AMD side we have the 5950X, the 5900X and the 5800X. Now they come in at, with TSMC 7 nanometer process node and um, they're using the Zen 3 microarchitecture. Their top of the line AMD CPUs. We do know Dr. Lisa Su, the AMD CEO, did announce that 7000 series Ryzen processors were hitting the market at the end of this month and should be on shelves at the end of this month. So stay tuned for that. And there was a live stream. We did have live coverage. That coverage is still on our website, and the link is will be below, obviously. Um, and then let's keep going to Intel side. Here we have Alder Lake, the Core i9 12900K, and the uh, 12600K. We also have the 11th and 10th generation CPUs, two from each, just like you see here. Um, basically, this is Intel's latest and greatest. Alder Lake is using Intel 7 nanometer, or well, Intel 7 node. It used to be called uh, 10 nanometer ESFIN, um, but Intel rebranded it as Intel 7. Uh, so basically, this is Intel's latest node, uh, Intel's latest microarchitecture, which is based on something called Sunny Cove, and then it went to Cypress Cove for 11th generation on 14 nanometer, and now it's on uh, Golden Cove on their performance cores um, on Intel 7 in Alder Lake. And then you also have uh, P cores, uh, E cores. They're uh, efficient cores. P cores are powerful. Usually you just have P cores. Here you have efficient cores. They're basically uh, Gracemont. They're called Gracemont. That's their code name and they work with the P cores uh, using ThreadDirector, which is really what Windows 11 is about for Intel. Uh, Windows 11 has full ThreadDirector implementation, which is a scheduler, basically tells scheduler where to put threads uh, to certain CPU cores, depending on um, what it deems fit. Uh, demos, it looks good, but you gotta put it to the test, right? Um, so we gotta see how it's working, and we'll tell you it needs some tweaking, but it does seem to be working in games, uh, and some one legacy benchmark, and then it does mess up another legacy benchmark, so. Anyways, uh, we do see good performance from these in Windows 10, so we'll see how it does in Windows 11. In Windows 10, it's basically a market leader, especially at 12900K, and especially in gaming. There are levels we haven't seen hit without these CPUs before, um, especially in their thread counts. So we have these, we have some 11th, we have some 10. Uh, this is the first Intel 7 client CPU to come to the desktop. And so let's see how that goes, and yeah. So, in Cinebench, Signbench R23, we have the mighty 5950X. Alder Lake does do better than it. Um, almost no difference. So if you take a 5% margin of error, these are all within 5%. Um, now, Intel's Alder Lake is in the lead. There, is much, there isn't much difference. There is some difference on the AMD side, a slight variance uh, that is noticeable uh, between... Uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11, and that's good news for AMD because they were the one that, I don't know, there was performance hits with early versions, or certain versions of Windows 11. Um, they seem to be remedied here. So, but that's a very synthetic benchmark. Uh, Blender, usually an AMD favorite. Uh, Intel keeps up with that 12th gen, even though it's below in thread count and P-core count. Uh, compared to the 5950, but those E cores do seem to be helping. We do see a weird result in Windows 11 for the uh, 5950X. Um, yeah, we're not we're not exactly sure why that is. So basically, yeah, um, we did retest that because we have to, um, and we tested over and over and over. I mean, usually these tests come out of uh, an average of three runs, but we went back and tested this like a lot more than three runs and 
this blender 3.2.1 test really doesn't take that long so we retested and retested and we kept coming out with the same result for Windows 11. Now, before you ask, yes, uh, we did take it out of sandbox mode. So Hyper-V was in memory isolation or core isolation. We did disabled all that sandbox stuff. Um, so we're not sure, but we do see some other results. So Handbrake Legacy, margin of error, but um, yeah, pretty much okay. Now, here's where we see something different. Handbrake New is less variance between Windows 10 and 11. It's a newer generation of the software, and we're using different, uh, basically, presets here. Uh, 1080p 30 fast, and uh, uh, Discord Nitro on uh, medium settings, uh, using the same videos as on the legacy benchmark. And here we see that Windows 11 is doing slightly better in certain cases. Um, noticeable by eyes, but if you did a math variance calculation on it wouldn't be too great um, but we would say it's significant enough to mention here we have super by 32 mi um, million digits so lower is better in this one and we do see that Windows 10 <laughs> uh, kind of across the board is better um, especially on the Intel side except for that uh, 5900X does a lot better um, and so is a 5800X uh, not much change on the 5950X, but AMD does better on Windows 11 while Intel does better on Windows 10 in this one. So it does introduce some variance, but um, so for instance, if we use the Windows 11 results, the 5900X would beat the 10900K uh, pretty easily. But if we use the Windows 10 results, they would almost be noticeably the same. Um, in performance between the 5900X and the 10900K. So this is a situation where Windows 11 does actually alter where CPU sits in the charts. So, um, yeah, so looking good for AMD so far. But these are CPU-only benchmarks, and this is just a single-threaded benchmark, and 10th generation is way before the 5000 generation came out. 11th gen, still, you have to look at the absolutes, and in the absolutes, I mean, Intel still single-threaded um, crown holder here. Um, oh, and also W Prime was off the charts. Just in the 12th generations, it wasn't, it was very significantly different. It seems like all the threads from W Prime just sat on the uh, E cores, and it was terrible. Um, but it was so off the charts, we have to investigate further. But there are, actually, we left them in the written article. Anyways, here we have the 5950X, and... Um, this is a straight up uh, floating point and integer operation comparisons. AMD has always excelled at the at the single precision floating points, and the uh, integers pretty much always gone to Intel since uh, we've been using this program on the new Ryzen and Intel Core processors. So not much difference here. Um, memory. Now we will mention this. Um, DDR5 is used in the 12900K, and and the 12600K uh, because that platform uses DDR5. Uh, if we did basically use quad channel RAM on older Intel stuff or AMD stuff, uh, like so Threadripper and uh, Intel's X series processors, uh, you would see comparable bandwidth numbers here. But here, yeah, not so much. Um, and almost no change from 10 to 11, which is good. But we do see a change here. Now, this is latency, and we can see latency. Memory latency here lower is better, and we can kind of see how these numbers correlate to the SuperPy numbers we saw earlier. SuperPy loves latency, and this is memory latency. Um, yeah, so latency, we expect higher with Windows, uh, with DDR5 and uh, the AMD processors, and uh, Windows 11 doesn't really seem to make a difference. So here's ScienceMark. This is one legacy benchmark we actually see the director help in. Um, now the red bars here are overall scores. The other bars are just random. Now the reason that the 12th generation and uh, AMD CPUs are doing much better in the memory bar there, that's way too high, is because um, Science Mark is so legacy it can't detect DDR5 and it cannot detect the cache system or the memory controller in the AMD 5000 series Ryzen CPUs. It pops up an error and says it's going to fall back on its default memory tests for these. Um, so there you go. It helps it in the score, but here we don't really see which is better and which is worse, like a gener from like AMD to Intel. Here we're looking for more like improvements or setbacks from Windows 10 to 11, and here we can see 
Intel's score overall jumped 500 points going to Windows 11. Now, ScienceMark is one of those benchmarks where there's a mixture of different tests ran, um, some at the same time, just rendering in the background. So the ScienceMark score actually would take advantage of ThreadDirector. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have AVX because it's way too old, but we do see some improvements. Um, and then AMD is doing pretty good too in Windows 11. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it how it goes. Um, how it goes down the road with future updates and such. Now, Cloud Mark, or CloudGate, sorry, from 3D Mark. Now, this benchmark is synthetic. Once again, we do have the red bars. Those are overall scores. We see Intel actually improving by a couple hundred points, but so does AMD here uh, in Windows 11 compared to Windows 10. So the rankings don't change. Intel is still doing where it did before. AMD is still doing what it did before. So we're basically getting overall scores with the 12900K leading the pack as it does. The 1200K trailing behind some of the AMD CPUs. Um, as it should in this benchmark. Um, so basically, same things, um, not too much difference, but we do see a bump in certain places, and uh, yeah. So we can't say thread directors do that bump, or we could just say Windows 11 may be better optimized for games at this point, or at least synthetic benchmarks. We're just going to say some synthetic benchmarks, because we see the same thing here. In Firestrike, once again, we see that some things are doing better, some things are not, but overall scores are basically staying the same. So no rankings are changing here. Um, yeah. I mean, remember, like, the rankings would have changed in that SuperPy test, but here, not so much. Unigine, or Unigen, or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is an engine used in a lot of games, and it's also synthetic. Here we have our 720p results, where the game is not bottlenecked by any graphics. Uh, Intel still leading the pack with 12th generation, um, pretty much across the board. Uh, but it's doing really well. Um, very little change, no big decrease, no big decrease on the AMD side. Um, all good, all around. Uh, same thing here, same thing. Shorts are pretty much the same, which is actually good. I mean, it means that you really shouldn't be that hesitant to update to Windows 11. And... Wherever your processor sits now, it'll probably sit tomorrow for the most part. Now here, we have Resident Evil 6. Now this is our first like actual game uh, with gameplay being benchmarked. And we can see here, Intel goes up almost 1,000 points in Windows 11, but eh, so does AMD. So you can't really say much, right? Um, but we do see there's almost no change. Intel's still the pack leader here, as we expected. Um, AMD says that should change with 7,000 series, so that should be an exciting article. Uh, we could do the same thing for for AMD 7000. Um, yeah, actually, we will. That's already in the plans anyways. Rise of Tomb Raider, and I think I'm going to hop out of full screen mode for this one, so bear with me. Okay, here we have Rise of the Tomb Raider, and um, yeah, here we have to zoom in, because these are just graphic images from Excel we pulled. Um, so we can see that our high resolution is always red, this is our lowest resolution in blue. Uh, we can see that basically there's very little change here. But we do see when we get to... Uh, oh, I see no change. I mean, nothing noticeable enough to talk about, but we do get hits in Windows 11, like 8 frames per second here. Uh, there should have been a hit I noticed earlier too. Windows 11, maybe it's another game I was thinking about. Um, but yeah, here again, 5900X hit in... Uh, in some of these games. So here we lost five percentage or five points, not five percent, five points in Windows eleven compared to Windows ten. Here we lost a few points on the Intel side going to Windows eleven. Um, here we have basically the same performance if not a little increase on the AMD fifty eight hundred. The twelve uh, slight decrease going there, but there was not a slight decrease in 720p results, just in 4K. So this would be 4K, or not 4K, 1440p, so like 2K. And then this would be 1080p, and this would be 720p averages, and these are minimums. The bar's right next to them. So we can see not much difference, if not a hit or miss, uh, hit or increase. It takes a hit in performance, or it increases a tiny bit in performance. Uh, so here we have an increase in the 720 while we take a hit in 4K. Or we actually increase here all across the board. Yeah. But mostly, once again, 
This one might actually be noticeable in 4K, but in this one too. So here's Escalation. Now, Ashes of the Singularity is a game that's not many people play. It, if you look at a Steam Game Stat website, just type in the Game Stats for Ashes of Singularity. That website tracks how many users are online playing that game. Now I've played this game, and there are not many people who play the games. The number of people who play in the game at one time is usually under 100 or under 50. Okay. And you can see this game has played so little and it's used as a benchmark so much that you will actually see boosts at every big launch for graphics cards and CPUs of this benchmark, of this game, because the game has to work the benchmark. Um, so you can actually use that to predict when people are testing new hardware before launch. I actually play the game sometimes, but not online. I play it against the AI, which is... Actually, that game gets updated a lot, surprisingly. But... Here we do see hits, and we see them across the board. Um, hits here on AMD, slight hit here on Intel, except when you get the higher resolution, it kind of evens out. Hit, 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 hit. Uh, not too much of a hit. Hit, well, no, not too much, not too much. These lower CPUs, they're bottlenecked. Um, but here, this game likes cores, but also likes power, and here are some of the highest results we've seen. Um, yeah, we'll see something else in GTA 5 coming up where the CPUs are hitting the limits of the graphics. Um, but on the AMD side or the Intel side takes a hit. I mean, it shouldn't be taking this hit, and it shouldn't be taking this hit, and AMD shouldn't be taking this hit or this hit. Um, but obviously, Windows 11 needs some tuning. Uh, but yeah, so we see some differences, but like honestly, if you're playing this game, you're not going to notice these, to be honest with everyone. Uh, but yeah, overall, interesting results. Now this is GTA 5. Everyone likes GTA 5 for benchmark because, I mean, a lot of people play GTA 5 still. Anyways, Windows 11, Windows 10, not much of a difference. But here on the Intel side, we do see a boost. Now games are real-world programs, and they have a very different threading thing than like pure benchmark like a pure benchmark on CPU performance. So here we can see like how to do in a game and honestly it's usually either stays the same or gets better with these 12th generation processors. But here we do see 186. We haven't been able to hit what went over 186 before. Um, so so far I mean AMD's still, Intel's still in the lead when it comes to most of the games. Uh, a slight bump here too. But we also see bumps on the AMD side so we can't make too many um, conclusions but we see some hits on the older Intel, but the Intel 12th generation seems to be doing better here. So we're not really sure what's going on with ThreadDirector right now. If anything, the fact that it's staying the same is good because we have seen when ThreadDirector is used incorrectly, um, it will take a hit. So it's keeping the CPU where it should be, adding more cores and threads while keeping efficiency. Although the new 12th generation are fully unlocked, well, not fully, fully, but like, they basically don't have power restrictions. <laughs> So they will go up very high in power if you pull, or if you don't pull, but like, you give it a task to do, and it requires a ton of power, yeah, the CPUs will, will do it, um, and not really mind the power, as long as you can cool it, of course, I mean, that's the biggest thing. So, uh, that concludes our video, uh, basically video of our article, and you can read more analysis and get more through the links in our comments. So, thank you for watching.